Good evening and welcome to another, we could probably call it a weekly Finn Harps versus Dundalk podcast at this stage, we've played them that many times. I thought our battle in Bali Buffet, a cracking match that a certain broadcaster for some reason missed completely and we all had to listen to Adrian Taft because the stream was so bad. To discuss it, we have Chris Clark, live from the limo, <laughs> and Donald Hanks. The, the limo's not great though. I think we do. We were due to have Pingu as well. I think it's just a signal. It's just off at the minute, is it, lads? I think so. I think he said he's in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, he's Another probably hooked bat. up to the Finn Harp stream, and that's what's probably. <laughs> yeah, we've another, already got another a good cracking, in there. Another cracking match in Donegal, lads. What is it with these Finn Harps and Dog games? What do we think? I just see that comic. Can we wait till the stream? For for anybody watching on the stream, we haven't we haven't jumped on at half time. That game is now officially over. (laughs) (laughs) It was one of them where I didn't want to look at Twitter though during the match because it would have just been it would have gave everything away on me. Um, So far, was it you who said that the the official club Twitter needs to come with a spoiler alert? <laughs> no, what I got in a in a really weird time zone thing where I, the, I had the game, the stream was on, and I was like, no, this doesn't seem right because the tweets are miles ahead of it. So I put the lads on. Oh God! And then James Rogers was tweeting, and he tweeted, "All Abby has scored," and Adrian Taff hadn't told me that they'd scored, and it still was about ten minutes away on the stream. So it was just this horrible time lifter. Yeah. Like I don't know when. Can I get happened. down to a bookie? I think there's a goal coming. <laughs> yeah, to, to put it into context, I actually jumped on Twitter and Pat the dog had Pat Hoban up as the goal scorer, and I thought they thought he scored a free kick. So that's how much the stream was behind. I was like, I didn't even know it was a penalty. But uh, are we pingo there? Are pingo? Are we, are we all right there with signals? I think so. Can you hear me now? <laughs> well, just, just in case we lose you, Pingo, we, did you get to listen to the game? I did, yeah. I got to watch uh, the first half and uh, or the first half hour, and then I was listening to the rest of it. Well, at, at the risk of you dropping off in the middle of Chicago, what we we'll start with? You, what What did you think of overall of what you saw? I mean, you have to take a point away to Harps as a positive, don't you? Um, yeah. I, like I think any team that goes up there and comes home with a point is always happy. So you took it at the start. Once we once we got those two goals, you'd be hoping we kind of push on, and we didn't, unfortunately. But look, that's unbeaten in four now, isn't it? Is it four or is it five? It's four. Four, five. I think we'll be very generous. Five. Today, well, technically Harps unbeaten three five. Times. Yeah. Half three times Sligo and Bowes. So yeah, you're right. Five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have a match of my own lads, so I'm trying to stay positive about everything. So I'm trying to have this like zen positivity. So I'm going to just say that I think it was a positive result that we managed to go home with a point. There you go. Bill Hullsides would be so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, what do we think? You're not on the whiskey yeah. yet, are you? No, I don't have the, I don't have the whiskey. I... I uh, I mixed it's like painkillers and whiskey the other night. I don't think I made any sense when I was on this, so I'm trying to be cold turkey on this. I have a bottle of water just to, you know, just in case of emergencies. Um, no, do you know what the main thing I was thinking was like in the position that we were in the two-one up. Um, I'm just looking at the at the table. If we had got one, uh, we would have been the same points as Drogheda. Yeah, uh, and a point behind Bowles, like it would. Um, the extra two points would have been absolutely huge. Um, I think what I was thinking after the not necessarily thinking that we we're going to beat Sligo and Bowes, like, you, how would you have taken seven points out of those these three games? I think that's probably what we would have wanted. It's just a shame that in the situation that we were in, that we could have gotten the nine points and we could have made massive strides. Um, and then Put that extra bit of distance between ourselves and Waterford because Waterford have a tough game tomorrow night and we could have really, really, really made a dent in things. But I think like the draw is probably a fair result on um the glitchy performance that I saw in the first half. Um FIFA, the first, it was like FIFA ninety five. 
<laughs> yeah, it was, I, I had it written down earlier. The first half was a bit of a blur, um, <laughs> but the the uh, it's good. Like they came back from a goal down again, which is a positive, you know. Uh, another free kick, um, and another Patrick Hooven goal. So like, there's plenty of positives tonight. I think it's just just irks just a little bit that it could have been that much better if they'd gotten the three points out of it. Yeah, I, I think like like Pink was saying it. When you go up, when you go up to Bali Buffet, it's a tough game for everybody. We, we spoke about it many, like almost since the start of the season. Any team going up there or getting a draw is probably a decent result in anyone's books. But again, when you look at the other results, the, the draw had a, the, the scream with a pat score there at the end, and it was there for the take. They could have, I think, we seen a comment there, or maybe from was it Kyle Muck in there. They could have, could have, it was one of those games that the dog could have won it. Sammy had a header towards the end, but then against a team like Finn Harps, where the dog could be, they could have easily lost it as well, and. You know, like, like Chris was saying in the chat before, um, um, three minutes of absolute madness from uh, from Finn Harps. In general, just a game um, where everybody thought Pat Hogan scored a free kick and just the stream was that far behind. Uh, just, I, I think it was just one of those performances, maybe that, we, not that we needed, but probably that they probably just had to scrape it out, chisel it out a little bit more than they've had over the last couple of weeks. Um, now, from only from what, I, I'm only going to what I see, listen to a rage and crap because I couldn't. I physically couldn't sit in front of the stream anymore and watch. Um, but yeah, I think you know what when you look at the team Finn Harps have as well. I mean, they've got some ball, they've got some some decent players. Bradley back to me pulling the strings from the midfield. Boyd again a good game. But even from us, you know, again, Mickey Duffy's at a, at a decent game. I had I you know like I, you know we get, I know we got Cherry and goals. It hasn't had a lot to do. I mean, we they've scored two, but apart from that, there's not really anything. You know. There's not really not there is nothing for him to do, but he didn't seem to be under massive amounts of pressure in it. Um, the first half was pretty. Chris, I, I bring you in, but I don't know if you're listening to it or watching it. But I thought the first half was just one of those games that it just it just seemed to take about 50 minutes for us to get going in game sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think that's the thing. It, we, I thought it was fairly even in the first half. Then we went through a real good spell where we were on top, and I thought we we could do something here. And then they go and score. And then it kind of went on a lull again up to half time, and I thought, have, "Have we fallen into this trap again? You know, where we go behind and then we kind of wonder how we we'll get back or get ourselves back into the game." Yeah. And then, like you just said, you know, three minutes of madness, silly free kick given away, edge of the box. Surely they were looking after um, Duffy's free kick in Oriel Park. I'm sure Ollie would have said to them, "Do not give away a free kick just outside the box again." Because we know what's going to happen. You know, Jared Doherty, I think, to be fair, for the free kick, he probably takes a step in behind the wall thinking this is going to go the same way. And then he realised yeah. that it'd come back his side and, and it goes right. So, like, the blame probably has to go to Jared Doherty for that one. But not, nothing you can do when it when it hits the back of the head. But blame yourself, unfortunately. And then a definite penalty for Huben. You know, he wins the penalty and, and hits it the opposite side again. <laughs> So he's mixing up his penalties too. So to get ourselves 2-1 in the lead in, in that quick fire, and they looked shell-shocked then, I thought, we, we, we've got to find ways to just, you know, start. You, you see it against us all the time. The team's coming to start really playing for the time, and they, they slow the pace down, and they pick it up whenever they need to. Make smart substitutions. If you look at it, it took an eternity for Vinny to make substitutes tonight which would probably still tell you he doesn't overly trust his bench that much. Yeah. Um, because Murray, out wide, like I like Murray as a player, but out wide, I, I don't think he's as efficient. Um, and then he brings on Jurkovskis, and then I think Jurkovskis and Sammy, the only two subs tonight. Yeah. Did he so. made, yeah. Did he make the first one during their goal? Is that correct? Not late, but I mean, it was... Yeah, he was trying to get the substitution on, I think, just before yeah. the goal yeah. was scored. And then, and then you, when you even think of their equaliser, you know, we've got a corner and we're trying to, to get it back in the box and we get absolutely sucker punched with a real quick breakaway, like a fabulous ball uh, into Tunde first. But um, as I said to you just before we come on here, I, he, he runs past Andy Boyle at one stage and I think Andy Boyle's going, oh no, <laughs> this is not good. I've got him. I've got to make up the space to get back around in front of him, and I, I, and, I, and I feared for it when I seen it happen. 
But uh, look, he's a hell of a player. But if, if only we just held this out and like we go and win there tonight, draw to lose, you beat, um, you beat obviously Finn Harps. That's a lot of pressure going on Waterford tomorrow. Yeah, it could change. It would have changed the table a fair bit, you know, in our favour. But look, we've. To be fair, you could say ourselves and Finn Harps have closed up an extra point on Drogheda tonight, so you could take that positive from it. It's another game without defeat. We'll take that. We scored more goals. Proven scoring more goals. There's plenty of positives to take for it, but I just, you know, an ugly win, I think is, the, is the, what they call it. Just, you don't overly play great, but you, you can grind it out and get the wins. Yeah. Rovers have shown that how many times this year. We used to be, you know, one of the pins we had on our collar under Kenny that we could win ugly and I just it's something we're finding hard in this group of players to, to put together you know but look a point to point I suppose as well yeah and I, I, as you mentioned as well I think you've with Vinny in the bench you, when you're looking for something if you're looking for a win or even if it's the opposite you're hanging on when you've got a, a not a weak bench but an under strength bench it, it's difficult it, it's got to be difficult now you've got some young players hand ready been called every under 21s mm -hmm. and stuff like that but when you haven't got players who've played a lot of minutes at that level, and, and Finn Harps will be a, a physically, you know, they're, they're a good team. They're a lot fitter than they have been over the years. They're not the team that yeah. Ollie, Hall, Ollie Hall and fought up to the league a couple, all those years ago. They're not, no. It's not kind of, you know, let's hit it down the wings and see what happens. They can play the ball, and they're as quick as anybody, as you said. But I just, yeah, I think what kind of, in moments like games like that, we're coming unstuck with the weaker bench, I think. Yeah. And, you know, think, you haven't got that option. You can play that around us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You could see it there tonight. You know, they, they, they change it up and, and, and get an extra man up front. And, you know, to, to have someone there to either play with Hoopin up front or, or to have swapped it up and, and done something different would have been ideal for us there tonight. But I think that whether, it, you know, the pitch getting heavy late in the evening. It, it, it's kind of a tough it's a tough environment to bring in a young lad and I think he was probably right not to hmm. bring it in and, and he brought in the more experience off the off the bench when he did but um, look we, we it's better than a lost lads definitely it's just I hate when we're ahead and we throw points away like that it's just because we've seen it so many times this year I was just I was delighted we didn't completely throw everything away to get ourselves back in the game then to get ourselves in front is tough enough but you know, if we if we had to come out of that with nothing tonight now, it would have been absolutely devastating. Yeah, and oh, we just touched on Pat Hoban there as well. He's under kind of a I don't know if the words were soldier and stone, but I think it's eight. I think I'm, I'm right in saying is it eight, eight and six? It's it's a hell of a turnaround over the last six seven weeks, isn't it? Yeah, he's on a massive massive run of goal scoring form, and he's. It's the effort as well. Like the effort is the thing I think that everybody had the most. Like anybody that was questioning him, it was down to effort or perceived lack of effort or whatever it is. But it looks like he's properly stuck in now and has been for a while. Um, and like that kind of a game, I always think that kind of a game suits him when he's up against two like absolute monster centre backs because it's just like he knows exactly what he has to do. When the ball goes up, he has to fight, he has to win it, and he's to give it to whoever's coming. Yeah. Uh, making runs off him and just on the on the thing of players making runs off him I thought I know we have we're, we're short of players like we're obviously short of players but I think taking Murray out of the position that he had been playing so well in the last few weeks was a mistake um, He even in the games when he's been playing well and we put him out onto the right hand side he just completely drifts out of the game doesn't get involved, can't make those late runs into the box, can't link up with Hooven the same way he does when he's playing as 10. Um, I, I totally get putting Patching back in and having the two sixes, like two holders behind him. But you just lose what he's like, what he's best at, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the, Hooven's been in fantastic form and Duffy has as well. And I think he said, the other night to worry about well especially about Huben but now about Duffy is like uh McElhenney went on a massive run of form after signing his pre-contract and uh Duffy's been on a cracking run of form <laughs> signed the pre-contract uh you saying I, mean, I don't know, I don't know uh, <laughs> what time this Huben pre-contract is going to be and that's not that there is going to be one but um 
there's a hard, there's a horrible looking train there. I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I, I'm I'm sure we'll 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 talk about it later. But just that uh, you know, this this contract situation now is is completely tearing us apart. You know, you would never say anything about the commitment level of the players, and in particular the players we're talking about, the, the Duffies, the McElhenneys, like you know, they understand what this club's all about. But for next year, if it's Vinny in place, to, to have to go and rebuild a whole squad again, we proved this year that that hasn't worked out. But next year, you know, whatever about the, the caliber of player being in there, where they the guys who knew what it was like to play in Europe, to be competing on every front, to win titles, to win cups. Like, we're not going to be able to attract that caliber of player, judging judging what we're what, the way how we're conducting our business right now. Um, you know, in in a while we'll we'll, we'll have the video from uh, from Darren McKeeley, and and these are the questions that he posed. And if anyone was was on Twitter this week, you will see he, you know, he he, he questioned. What, what the whole transfer structure is at Oriel Park and, and, and why we're letting these best players go. You know, when we've got rumours all week then about we were offered a, a two-year contract, but he decided to take a one. You know, but we're hearing also now he's got a four-year deal at Derry, but on reduced wages. So, like, if that was an option, you know, could could we have looked at the, at the two-year contract and said, well, we'll we'll give you a three-year contract, but it's it's on the same wages, basically. Uh, was Would it, that have been a goal for him? I, I don't know, but this one two-year contract thing is, you know, it's it's coming back to bite us now, big style. Waiting for options on contracts. It's 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 not going to float it. We said it only a week or two ago, I think, when whenever the, the fats thing broke, we were like, we were the guys who, who broke the mold in, in three and a half year contracts. Yeah. You know, Gannon, Hoare, all signed in on this. You know, now for us not doing that, to be beaten by that same transfer policy is a bit like drawing 2 2 in Hogs tonight, lads. Everything's great. No, nah, no, nah, you're back to 2 all. You know, the, the, that whole scenario sums up this season. As a whole, you know, you, you you're being beaten by your own players in other clubs, and we're, this is just going to, you know, like, come here. If I was a Derry fan, lads, I'd be loving it. This is like when, after year one of Kenny, we realised we can be good, and then he started pulling in a caliber of player. You know, suddenly the likes of Kildolf and that, when you're like, you're you're in dreamland. They're they're heading that direction now, like, um, and only only to be on that boat. Yeah, I just just on, on just for uh, continuity, I actually I actually made a mistake in hand while he was calling to the under twenty one squad. It was Quinn. I completely completely yeah. mixed up them two. And just for anybody who thinks I'm stuck in the matrix here, I was just seeing a comment. This clock is broken. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody thinks I'm still waiting on the stream, I just seen it. Yeah, we, uh, we thought it was comment. attached to the stream. Just, just in case so. you think I'm I'm stuck in uh, in yesterday <laughs> or something. Uh, Pingo, just when we have you there, what just on the contracts and stuff, and you know what what Chris was saying. Do you think? Do you think they they will sit down with players? Do you think they're just waiting on just the season to end and see if they can get you know just sell this club on the market? Um, I mean, do I think they'll sit down with players? No, it's been the straight answer. Do I hope they will? Yes. Um, I, look, it it wouldn't surprise me if they have sat down with players, but the offers that they're putting forward to them, yeah. good enough, you know. Um, I just. I think the sad, the sad part of it is, and I see someone just commenting, you know, is who been putting himself in the shop window, um, with his performances at the minute, and obviously with the news with Duffy, it's the club has made it easy for these players to walk away. You know, when when is when is the last time that it was easy for a player to walk away? You know, like we look at probably the most high profile player that left until eighteen months ago when all when all this shit started was was probably Ron and Finn, wasn't it? You know, back to Rovers and. Even then, I know he came out and said he was joining a club to win trophies and, and things like that. It, it took time, you know. I don't even think he believed it when he said it at the time, you know, that kind of way. He, he wasn't leaving he wasn't leaving a club that was in decline. He was leaving a club that was that was the top the top team in the country. Um so yeah, I just it's it's just frustrating, isn't it, when you look at it and 
no no blame can be put on the hands of, of Michael Duffy or McElhenney or if Hoover's putting himself in the shop window to go elsewhere. Like you, you can't blame these lads at the minute. It's 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 all it's all they're doing at a club. Um, and, and as you say, this transfer policy of of one year deals. I, I I think some players would still sign on a two year deal just to have that little bit of little bit of longevity. But I think that the one year stuff is just is laughable, you know. And the fact that the fact that Bill has came out and said it publicly that that's the that's the transfer policy of the club. I think that's the that's the issue there. You know, you, you should keep that stuff to yourself. You shouldn't be telling people that if if you're over 27, you're getting a one year deal, because now every club in the country. Draw like players can go up to draw it and get a two, three year deal. Less money but more longevity and that's what that's what players ultimately are going to be happy with is the longevity. Yeah, I think that you, you need that commitment from like we said it before, you know, you need a commitment from the club. Obviously players will commit if they think there's a commitment from the club on the other end and unless that's there, it's, it doesn't look like they're gonna be and, and when you mentioned why why wouldn't Pat Hogan be putting himself in the shop and Pat, any of them? Like why like these boys have bills to pay that you know if, there's no contract there, they're gonna to have to um they're gonna to have to play somewhere. So if there's nothing on offer, they, of course they're gonna be in the shop window and they're well entitled to it. Um but just at the at the at the risk of killing this positive, slightly positive uh battle of uh Bally Buffet we call it for tonight. So during the week you would have seen on Twitter um a Dundalk, I suppose legend probably doesn't cover Chris and Donald, does it? I don't think uh, Dundalk here. I think I said royalty. Royalty. That's royalty. what we go with. <laughs> um on Twitter during the week, you know, everybody knows Dale McKeely around town. He's he's living abroad now and is well known in Dundalk so he's living in town. And the uh comments during the week on Twitter kind of caught caught fire with a lot of people and a lot of people were kind of you know commenting on the need and sharing and talking about on, on private groups. So Chris and Donald, um, as we do in podcast, well, we're always first to everything, as as other as other podcasts found out. Uh, they sat down with with them with yesterday and had a chat. So what we're going to do now is, Chris, you might have to just double check. We're going to just run this video view from start to finish. So if anybody is interested, we we kind of put this out yesterday, but a little snippet out yesterday. This interview was shot as you see it is the way it was done. There's no editing. There's no. It was, it was shot it's 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 there as it is so it's it's from start to finish um so it's a very to say it's an interesting watch is is it's putting a mildly isn't it lads it's great yeah. to hear from someone like that yeah I, I, and i think to be fair to him he was very honest in his opinion he was yeah and 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 you'd expect nothing less from from dermot as well and you know he he said you know that, that he was different what he what he put out on Twitter, he was feeling that way for quite some time, and I think he just felt he he, he had to get it off his chest, and um, thankfully he gave us he gave us this chat, I suppose, um, yesterday. So hello and uh, welcome to the town end. We have a very important guest. Some would say it's somewhat League of Ireland royalty when it comes to the list of honours and clubs that this man has played for and managed. So I think, Dermot, I'll be right in saying we've done the clean slate. There's nothing domestically that we that you haven't won, am I right? I, I really don't know. I think we won most, I won most things between being a player and, and a manager. But, that's something I don't hire back on, in fairness. I think they're gone, they're in the past. I think there's more to be done to, to look to the future. Um, and everybody knows that Dundalk was my starting point. And, you know, eventually I moved up there and I made, you know, my family is there. And, uh, you know, it, it's something special. It's, it's unusual, I think, for a footballer to get it, or a manager, whatever, to get attached to it, to a tell. But uh, I did, fortunately. Or unfortunately, fortunately for me, maybe unfortunately for Dundalk, but there you go. Was there was there something about um like was it the fans? Was it you know, was it just everything there when you see how much the community feeds into the club and the club feeds back to the community? It's it's probably a rarity, it's not in every club, sure it's not. No, well coming from Dublin particularly, you you don't get that, you know, the 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 bigger clubs then. Shell Grove was um, Shell, Bowles, 
about the different now. I mean, the, the model has changed. But them days, it was, you know, if you played, you went home, and that was it. But when I got to the dark, then it was, it was different. Like, your fans all the time, and you, you, you stayed over after a game. You never got in the car and shoot back. Well, we did sometimes, but when Martin, when Martin Lala was available to drive us, the other three wouldn't have been capable of driving. But nights you stayed over then, and you made friends. And, and then you, we were walking around the town the next day, you'd see all, you know, you'd see people who were at the game who wanted to talk to you. I never experienced that. And I, I, I have to say, I've always said it. And, and I, I loved on that from the minute I set foot in. Uh, it just so, hit me like a blow in the head. Like it was just, it was just different. And uh, yeah, I loved it. And I, and, and I still say it's the heart of the community. It's, it's, I know what people say that, you know, they watch, they follow Gaelic or rugby. Or they, well, I think Dundalk FC has a, has a place. And this comes back to my, my feelings on the club. Now, we loan this club out. We don't, no one ever is going to take it from us, I don't think. And we, we've gone through ups and downs and all this gone into the first division, come out of it again, had great years with Steve and, and now what's happening is it, it's unfathomable. I don't understand what's going on. I really don't. I suppose if we, if we go into that, so, so this week, I suppose it probably <laughs> broke your heart a little bit that you, that you felt you had to take to Twitter, maybe just to, to voice your concern slightly on it. I mean, if you take, I don't know, can you, can you even take this season as a whole, Dermot, and, and, and try to sum out how you, how you feel? That... Well, I'm absent, obviously. I live away. But I watch the football on uh, League of Ireland, the, the TV one. We have that. Mm-hmm. But we start the season off and we've got, uh, you know, John Gannon, John Hower, Chris Shields, gone. Two of them to your biggest rivals who are now going to walk the league. See, that to me is, that's, that's the first step gone wrong. You, you cannot, if you want, if you lose players, you lose them to somebody else. You don't give your best, John Gann's the best right back in the league. So you give them, by not giving them a proper contract, you send them to Rovers. So he's going to hurt you. So he got another medal. Um, I, what really brought this on was the three matches in a row we've won. And then everybody says, well, that's great. Now oh, the crowd is back and we love it. We're still liable to be in a relegation battle. And if you get stuck in with Finn Harps, a playoff with Finn Harps or Waterford, that, that ain't no gimme. Okay, Longford are gone, but the others, the others are there. So... There's nothing given there that you stay up. Mm-hmm. Now, now you look at it, and this week, and when McLennie's gone, you've got Duffy gone now. Yeah. I think uh, there's another one I hear is gone already, agreed with Derry. Yeah, well, I mean, Patrick next, will be gone, yeah. Yeah, they'll be sort of seeing Lee next. Like, you know, they'll have everything belong to the dog up in Derry. And that's great. It's, it's great for Derry. That's the way the thing works. But Dundalk should be. The number one club are in that bracket mm-hmm. and to be raided by other clubs and you, you'll find Pats will get a couple because Stevens there you know you, yeah it shouldn't happen we should have our player I mean they're trying to run a football club without players so I don't I don't understand it you can do it on the computer but you can see yeah the fact that you have a ground you can put your boots on and go out and play that's you need people and if you want to win a league you need good players yeah. You don't be giving away a good place because you don't want... And I understand, like, Michael Dovey got... Maybe it was time for him to go. His young family, whatever, whatever. He got a four-year deal. Now, maybe you say, well, I can't give you a four-year deal, Michael. I, it's, I can't. But you can't say, I'm going to give you a, a footballer, whatever he is, 28, 29, say, well, we're going to give you one year. Boy, everybody else is giving two, three. Maybe four is too long. That might prove to be... To be true, but mm-hmm. players are also entitled to player welfare. They're entitled to, to be able to look after their family and to know that at the end of their career, whether they come at 24, 23, whatever age, that's that's their football life over for the most of them because they're not going to coach or they're not going to manage. So they have to look after people. So again, you'd say players players are mercenaries, but 
they have to be in a way, they have to look after themselves because it's such a short life. And now that it's full time, it's different before. We all had other jobs. We trained Tuesday and Thursday, Saturday morning. Lovely. So we had jobs to do. We go to and when football was over, we moved into work. We probably paid attention to the jobs that we hadn't been paying attention to for years. So but that's all changed now. So mm. I I don't understand that I don't understand Jimmy Gilson. I don't understand his role. It's like Nero Fiddles by Ron Bones. It's this this is the biggest act of vandalism I, I think in the history of Irish football I, brought on by the Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't understand. I don't know what their game plan is. I, I can't see it. Is it a is lack it of knowledge in the league? players? Huh? Is a lack of knowledge in the league? There, do you think that they, they, you know, if you think of the transfer policy at the start of this year, like you just said, you've let Sean Hoare and Sean Gannon go to your biggest rival. You've let John Moutney, who, you know, was a John foundation Moutney, of the club. Him. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he was a foundation of the club along with Chris Shields, really understood Absolutely. the community here. Let him go to Pats, let Robbie Benson go to Pats. Yeah. And now, during, yeah, halfway during a struggle season, we've let our captain, Chris Shields, go, and we've let our, one of our two most creative players in Patrick McElhenney and Michael Duffy both leave to a rival, like you said, for next year. So yes. it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. So what's the general manager's job to do? What's he doing? Is he just not, is he, is he in there just to say yes to everything? Or if the Americans have no idea of, of what's in the league and they don't, it's right. Well, mm-hmm. then you put someone in charge who should know about the league. Now, if he doesn't know that letting Michael Duffy, <laughs> McElhenney, and all these players go is not right, well, then there's something wrong with him. He, he doesn't know anything about football, or he doesn't know anything about League of Ireland football. But I, listen, if you walked in there as a general manager and you look at the team, you're, any man of, of normal intelligence will say, well, I can to keep X, Y, and Z, and I can try and get Sansa might be, in my opinion, maybe coming over the top. I let him go and I'm going to get somebody in. But they've got people in on short term contracts who can't play. I mean, they, they've got big money for a year, but they're not going to be here at the end of the year. Not only has he have the, the lack of knowledge of the league, they don't understand the club. They don't have no fit, they don't have any feeling for a club. You know, they don't remember Save Our Club. You know, they don't remember this club nearly went out was extinct mm-hmm. except for the supporters and that happened how many years ago that's that's sh- like in my lifetime that's short we're not talking something happened happen in 1926 or 1945 this happened recently when maxi was out in the streets yeah i mean and people were caught were, were contributing and saving the club mm-hmm. so yeah collection buckets all over the place that's what we're doing like we're those fans went begging and the people of Dundalk reacted. You know, something happened and, and we took over at Stephen King Lane, and that's lovely. But you have to build on that. And uh, this is not, nothing's being built. It's Everything is being destroyed. It's, it, it really, it's like a wrecking machine just coming in. It's like someone doesn't like us, took over us, and then said, yeah, now we have you. We're going to wreck the club. Not, we're going to progress the club. We're going to wreck it. Really, are, are they secret Shamrock Rover supporters? I don't know. I haven't got that clue, but there's something, there's something wrong in this. This, I, I just, you start a new supporters club, which you look, I'm a member of, mm-hmm. and you're going to talk to somebody. This is so easy. Well, it is when someone sets up Zoom, and he cancels the last minute. I mean, well, why? Why not sit there and take the few questions I asked? Everybody wants to ask, and they were all these other questions. I wonder, nothing might. What I put up, there was nothing in it. There were straightforward questions. There was nothing, I wasn't trying to make a point. I wasn't trying to score points. I just asked it because I despair for this club. I don't think this, if this club survives, how are we going to, what are we going to do next year? We're going to be long for it. Yeah. Uh, or we're not. Someone, yeah, with, with three players. Jimmy Gilden has some magic so form in his head. He's got a magic 15 players in that we're going to win a league again. Uh, no, I don't think so. Hmm. 
Yeah, but right up to right up to the current moment, Dermot. I think we we counted yesterday it was seventeen players turned over in a year and a half, and all of them are first team players that's just walked into to other teams. Scandalous. I mean, I forgot about John Mountney. I forgot about John Mountney because not because he was bad, but because he was so good. He came on and played any position you wanted, and him and Chris Shields were the heart of it. And why? Even if John Mountney was not to be in your first team, you'd keep him because he can play right back, left back, he can play in the middle, he can play centre half. He's, he's deadly. Why would you let him go? Like Chris Shields. What, you went to Bangor? I don't know, because his family? No. No, there's something else going on. It's just the life of him. You know, Chris Shields. He, he, no, what would you say? The best player in the team? No. But what? He, he just was too dark. No, they, they, they came on. And when they come on, you could hear the crowd going because you knew these people were committed. Now, I, I'm not saying none of the other people aren't, but these two were particularly committed. And probably a bit like myself, all the clubs I played with, people associate you with Dundalk. Now, I, was only here, I only played three years in Dundalk, but people say you play with Dundalk. No one says you, you won the league four times with Shamrock Rovers. They don't. They, they look and they say, I remember you play in Dundalk. Dundalk was in, you know, because I had something that they got out of me and I was able to give it on the pitch. And that's what Mountney and Shields are aware. They weren't nurseries, they weren't just coming in. They, they had that extra bit of stuff. And that, that's gone. And then what happens after that, the rest has to follow because you're saying you're letting these people go. Well, why would you stay after that? You say, well, no, there's something going on here. It's not good. So, no. So we all go. Yeah. And now, you know, perfect storm. There you get a few bob. They're going to chase your players. Pats are going to chase your players. They, they've all, they've all, oh, well, Pats are building from the bottom up, like bows, which is what should be done. Um, not, not dependent on huge money boys. Rovers are probably in... in the position the dark where they, they're probably in the position to go and get any player they want. And the dark <laughs> un, do unbelievably and they are in a position to sell everything they want. I can talk about selling stuff like it just the family joy is gone. It's just oi, I I oi, I don't know. Why boy else come in and wreck it? I, I just don't understand. Yeah. And I've been sitting here moaning with my good lady every time I watch the match. And she listened and listened and listened and I'm moaning and I'm moaning and I can't believe it. And it just comes to say, look, why don't you put it down? And just, just ask, just, just say, just store the conversation, get people, because otherwise we're going to three matches on the track. It doesn't make any difference. You win, stay up toward the bottom of four, one or fifth in the bottom, whatever it is. It don't make any difference. You can't, you've no players. You know, you, so unless, uh, you have a manager that, that I don't think has agreed a new contract. So if your manager can, hasn't got a, another year in his contract, how would everybody is talking to, to the players except on that? Yeah. That's a good business model. You know, quite <laughs> intelligent that one. Like you just everybody's talking to your players except you and your manager, who you have to, whether you like him or don't like him who you think is going to be in charge and is good enough to know the players he wants. No contract. I think Jimmy Gilton probably has a contract because he's sitting pretty. Obviously he's doing something that, because it doesn't make any difference whether he wins, loses or draws. Because he's, just, he's obviously collecting his check and he's he's a three-year contract. He's probably the only one up there that has a, a contract longer than, three, longer than a year. You know, so uh, I don't, I, it just, it beats me. I just can I just ask you just on on the the management side of things because obviously there's there's been a whole host of reasons that we're in the position that we're in now but two things I guess so how difficult would it have been to try and manage a squad of players who are out of contract at the end of the season and are going to have their head turned every five minutes by different clubs around the country and then how difficult is it going to be now before the end of the season especially looking at lads that are out the door, like officially out the door already. How difficult is it going to be to get consistent performances from these players for the rest of the season? Well, I'm amazed at, obviously Michael Duffy has 
been having conversations for whatever, a couple of weeks or whatever, but his performances have been outstanding. Like he has he hasn't hasn't let anything get in his way of saying I'm a Dundalk player and I'm I'm, I'm playing. Chris Sheets did the same, John Melby did the same, Magalini, they all the same, they all they all play right till till the death. Now they're really good pros. So you can manage that, but you you cannot manage a, a club where you've three players for next year and you're gonna have where are they going to get players from? They're not again we're gonna have the United Nations here. We'll we'll have team we'll have players from everywhere who don't know League of Ireland, who don't know the club, who have no love for the club. That's not going to work. I don't care who's the manager. I, I don't care. If you get Alex Ferguson back out and give him this thing next year and say, Alex, you need to build a team, but you've got to compete with Chamber Rose, St. Pat's will be there, Bohemians, just three. And yeah, I mean, he's he going to tell you he's Alex Ferguson, he's not Jesus Christ. You know, it, it's miracle <laughs> stuff now already. It's a miracle to stay up, it will be. And it's, I don't know what's greater than the miracle. I'm not very religious, but it's whatever times that number just to do it next year. It's just great. And how somebody up there in, in authority is not, excuse me, shitting themselves over next year, I don't know. Because if it was me, I'd be, I'd be gone now. This, this, you're selling all your players around me. And what am I doing next year? Uh, I don't know. You haven't given me a contract. But we'll talk to you later. I mean, stop. I'll just go. Yes. Just, I don't think Vinny, he come back, Grant, when he should have, when he shouldn't have, that's right. You have to think that he likes the club. So now you're saying what his position is untenable, I believe, because they're selling people over his head. He won't, they won't give him a contract. So why, why would you stay? Why, why, there's, you, you have to have lost the love. You just, you can't do that. And I don't. Why? I, I just keep. I got to the stage. I said, why? What's what's the reason? These people are Americans. Are I presume rich? So why why would you be destroying something? Why would not win and get into the Europe like sheriff? You know why not go and try and build and get into that next round and make a million quid around instead of half a million quid around? I don't know. I, if I had it, if I understood. I wouldn't have written that. I'd say, well, I understand what they're doing. But I, I, I can't fathom it. And I'm not, I'm a football person. I play it, I manage, I understand it. It's not like I'm somebody who just comes in. I'm not sitting in the pub drinking points and saying, I have the answers to everything. I don't. But I'm looking at this and I'm going, I, I just don't understand it. I, I, there's no logic in this at all. I, I've never seen this happen before. I've seen clubs going bust. I saw the dark going. I remember, I, I remember being in there when the 1995 season when we won the league from nothing. But starting off, we, we called every week I went in, they were telling me they're cutting wages. How long we got to cut the wages? And you, you, you have to stand firm and say, well, if you do that, I'll go. You, that's grand. Yeah. You can't cut the wages anymore. Every time we won a match, so we go, you go into the, in the board and say, it's very tight, the money, you know. We'll cut the wages. No, you won't. I mean, one of them said that we should. One of the solutions at the time was, and he'll know who it is, said to me, we we pay the players on the gate. So people come in, we pay them. And if nobody comes in, we won't pay them. And I said, this is one of the new directors were coming in to put money in. Like, are you mad? You're going to pay them on crowd. I said, you can't. But I fought and I got my way. I, I bring players in that probably weren't good and, and maybe weren't good enough to win the league. I don't know, but it was one. Probably with large slice so of good luck. But you're there, you have, you have to fight your corner. But there's nobody fighting no corners here. This 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 this, this fight's over. You're sitting on the road, this fella's just punching the head off you, and you can't get your hands up. But that's it. You yeah. stay there and taking it. Now you either take it because you love being punished like Jimmy Gilton obviously does. Obviously, he likes being in the car and getting the head knocked out because he's not doing that. Or Vinny, I think, who worries about it. Mm -hmm. And it's coming, it has to be coming to the stage saying, well, look, I can 
I can't do this. I'm not Jesus Christ. I can't do it. So I don't know. It probably says a lot about Vinny that actually was able to pull three results with all this madness going on around him as well. It, I, it says he must have a, a, a fair love for this club to be still absolutely. there. May I say, I, and I don't mean to criticise Vinny in any way because I'm not. Jim Gilton, yes, I, I, I have an issue with the general manager that doesn't know what to I don't know what's on his CV, but I think he applied for the wrong job. They gave him the wrong job. I don't know. Should be kick clean or whatever it is, but he wouldn't be as good as the current one. But Vinny, I know Vinny took this for the right reasons. I know. And John Gill, John Gill said, "No, damn, it's not right." I, I spoke to him, but Vinny, he came back and stuck with it. And anybody that can get a win out of these team, this team, with the way things that are going on in the background. Deserves huge credit, and he deserves huge credit. And my criticism is not a Vinny. I'm saying, I'm trying to put myself in his in, in his position, and you, you just got to be saying to yourself now: we got three wins on the track. What's your what's your reward? Uh, we just saw Michael Duffy. So win another two matches. What are they going to do? Take up the goalposts? Sell them? <laughs> I don't know. It's just illogical. Yeah. It's just not bad. You win three matches, you don't get a new contract. You get they sell your best player. Who's the next best player? No, he's gone another. Like we get three more matches. Go say they sell another player. I'll give another. They don't sell him. They give him away. Give him away. Yeah. No. As I yeah. said, the only shot the boy in Curry van will be gone. No, it'll be up outside Derry next. It'll be not Curry van. It. Be shocking. It might be a dish of chips. <laughs> what are you there for? Important going fans. It's important that you're going. That's important. You get few points and you need a single. They're vital. One of the other points you hit on was not only the, the turnover of playing side of the club, but, you know, the staffing side. When you think of the, the names, it's no longer involved in the club. And, and look, I know you you name dropped a few and I'm sure they wouldn't mind us, but, you know, the Colin Murphys, the Martin Connellys, Simon Blackmore, you know, this week we, we heard that Desdon Levy is, has stood down from the board now as well. So there's actually no local link at all anymore at the club. It's how did how that happen to a community club is is really baffling, isn't it? Well, it's not baffling when you put it with the other part. If you yeah. think it's a wrecking ball coming in, I, if you if you, no, well, I, I, the only thing I can uh, only logic in it. I mean, logically, is they're trying to just someone is trying to destroy the club. I mean, what have all those people got in common? The people, the four people you mentioned there. The one thing they have in common, they loved on that. Mm -hmm. they, they love the club they, they love the club now the, the club they love what it stands for so, so they're gone so you can say about getting rid of players well, players are players you get, player, you get another player you get another you don't get Martin Connolly in again you know you don't get another Martin Connolly you don't get Blackmore you don't get that they're mm -hmm. gone no I know there's no lady I mean how many years is he there you know I mean the commitment over the years is Massive Simon Blackmore was how long? I mean, years there since it's bad league. It's just and there's a connection. And, and again, I'm not saying you have you don't, you don't have to have a connection. That, that family goes back to 1970, whatever, when we play it. Yeah. You know. So I don't know. You're, you're, you're asking me to explain the unexplainable. I don't know. I just I genuinely it's like some Wicked witches just decided that we're, that this club is gone and we're going to do it this way. We're going to sell all our best players and anybody that has any brains on the committee that might even say, yes, I know something, they're gone. So I don't know who they're going to bring in. Some fellow from Chicago or knows absolutely nothing about it. I, it, it, it defeats me. It defeats me. And it's so sad because, it, you know, you don't take, you look around the economy, you're going to be sitting would save our club again. These boys will go and the book is Seville. It'll be outside the church and somewhere the churches and so many, not so many people there no more. But you you don't have your book itself. You know, this is it. Back to the back to this rubbish again from a couple of years where we you know where we were the best. And somebody just I just Nick Bourne from Shamrock Rovers said to me, like you need a good Rovers team. You need a good Dundalk team. You need you need that class. You need them going to Europe and thinking they might win. And you know, Rovers, they might 
you might get in and we can all support them because we're a little leg. You know, we're a small little leg. But the people that are attached to well, it was Bowles, all those clubs, they're all unique, but we're getting rid of ours. The people that, that are attached to us, we're getting rid of. I don't know. It's just so sad. And if we if we believe everything that we that we hear right now, you know, they're they're actively trying to sell this club, but you that you've kind of touched on the point already, Dermot. You know, you, you think you would be trying to get it in the best position in the league with attracting the best players because you sell it for the most value, but they seem to be doing the complete opposite of that. It's going to be like a fire sale at the end of the season, won't it? Yeah, it will be a fire sale. But and I, I understand too that there's a there's an ongoing problem with the ground. The, the ground is not suitable for for football in the modern in the modern day. You know, and I, I as I I've said I I don't understand the the the, the actual problem who owns and what is it for and everything else. But I, I'm sure if you got good people in, they would be in a position to talk around that and, and prove the ground. And why do we not get any money from the government? Why, the community grounds, are, they're all over Europe. I go to a match every Sunday in a community ground. So everybody sits down, everybody does a, you know, your raffles and you've got, like it, like it would be in Don't Talk, you know? And, it's just nothing. See, the, the ground is stood still. The, 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 I mean, it's, it's the same as it was, except for the pitch. It's the same as it was when I was playing. I mean, not, they, I don't. That maybe they made minor improvements, but that's nothing. Nothing substantial. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has to be addressed as well. But <laughs> the first thing a functioning football club needs is players. <laughs> There's no point in having a fancy <laughs> ground if you haven't got eleven players. To go. Oh, as I said, you need people to be putting on their boots every week. No point in saying we have this magnificent stadium. And, oh, so sorry, we forgot. We don't have players. Uh, right, that's good. That's a that's that's a that's a viable plan. So, I think there's two things have to be done in tandem. There, I think um, someone needs to buy the club. Yes, someone that has done dark and hard. And somebody also has to look at and, and get players and try and win matches. And then also there's the other part where we also have to face that the, the ground is, is not right. And so it's going to have to be done with that. However, that's done. But the only thing, the only way that's going to be done, I think the ground part of it, is if someone from Dundalk actually owns the club. Uh, someone that loves Dundalk. Someone that's, you know, in it for the right reasons. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know who they, who, who they, if there is one or who they are. I again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in, the, I'm not in the community right now, so I don't, I, I'm not picking up for it. I think one of your most damning quotes on on Twitter um, this week was that the, the club is only loaned to owners if it yeah. will forever belong to the people of Dundalk. I think that's. You know that's that sums up everything of how we're feeling and everything about it. So these investors can come in and whether they mismanage or whatever, but they have a duty of care to this town to look after the club. And I think sometimes they need to realise that. I've, I've, I have said I use a quote. It's not a quote. It's, it's, it's I feel I, I really believe that that you you know we loan that out to people. That's all. They've no they've no right to destroy this. They've no right. It's completely wrong. And we we'll get it back. Because in the end, they, they come in, whatever, they make a quick few bob and they've gone. That's grand. But it'll come back to us. And maybe with the new supporters club, maybe someone with a wider vision might be able to include this, like they've done in Bowles, where they where they've, you know, got the crowd back, got people going use modern technology, use the Facebook and all this kind of stuff. That's that's good. But I still believe that. I, I just the Americans don't understand. Jimmy Gilton should understand. He's not too far away. But the, yeah, the Americans don't understand this. They, they they can't understand that it's not their club. Yeah they they bought it, but they walk away from it. And they, they'll go and he'll be gone. And we're left with nothing. But 
will be left to the supporters again, who will rally around and the mic take. But you're, you're talking about going back into that force division. And I mean, that's a, that's a graveyard. You know, you know, tried for two years to get shells out of it. You know, got pipped on the pulse for the last time and they're still in and hopefully they're going to get out this year. But it, it's, you can't, they don't, the Americans don't understand. I don't think they, they know what the Bell of Force Division is. It's, un, it's unthinkable that you want to go back down there because it's so hard to get back out. It's, and not because of great football. It's, it's hard. Now you've got Galway going full time. You'll find my shells have gone full time. A lot of these teams in there will go full time. So now you're going to have four, t- three teams, say, looking for one spot out. That's, it's not going to be, hard. that's not, it's not easy. What you, but that's what you're setting yourself up for. But they just don't seem to, they're right on the edge of the cliff. They're ready to go. One more step, they're going over. So they should do the decent thing and pack up and leave us. Go on. And let us, as a community, I shouldn't be saying us, let them dark as a community, find someone that loves the club as much as we, the supporters, do. Because that's what I am. I'm not. I'm not in, I don't want a job. I'm not in for any job. I, I'm just a supporter. And I'm not the best supporter in the world. I, I don't, I'm not, don't live there. But I, the, I know people, and the people that I know love the dark right to the bottom of their hands. And that rubbed off to a certain extent with me. There's, there's fellas that, are, that I know put me in a hateny place, I tell you. But, uh, Something's got to be done. Someone, somewhere's got to say, stop, look, stop. Let Vinny keep us up and then get someone in. It happened before. Get a proper manager in, get a team in. We're not looking for the same again. You can't say, well, we're going to have 10 years of, of like, like Stephen Kenny. But you can get something like, bit of luck goes your way. He'll leave the Irish job and he'll be ready to come back. <laughs> that's, that's, that's plan A. <laughs> the same <in> return. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it'd be sad for him to lose the old, old jam, but come here. We need them more. Um, look, Dermot, I think you, you, were, you were so good to give us your time today. We really do appreciate it, but um, we wouldn't want this time to pass either without us. You know, I know it's um, as a family, it, it, it was been a very tough year for you guys with the passing of Alan. So, just from ourselves here in the podcast, we just want to pass our condolences to you and your family. Um, as well and we hope everyone's doing good now and you know you'd be forever in our hearts thinking about that too thank you and there's 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 a offspring coming i tell you we never we never know there's an eight there's an eight-year-old grandson he could be in there we could be we could be continuing the, the keely name i think he might kick a few bodies as well <laughs> we, we might need a little bit more quicker think. A bit more than me than Alan, yeah, a bit, bit, uh, not so much culture. But, uh, very pleasing. <laughs> Perfect, Derry. Just want to say thanks again, um, and and all the best. Thank you very much, and I thank you for your, uh, thank you for, for, thank you for that. Thank you. Not at all. Well, well there we go. Yeah, to say um, we've had we've had a, a few responses, a few responses. Yes. One or two. Um, and that, that's just, the that's the third time I've listened to that interview from start to finish, pretty much. And it doesn't. There, there's something about bringing people, the likes of them with Keeley and earlier in the season we had the likes of Martin Law, Law you know Alan O'Neill, you know people with this kind of passion. Like we've got passion, but these lads have worn that jersey and. You know, it, it's a different level, isn't it? It's a, like a different. It's like you're listening to an icon. It's why you went up to Oriel Park in the first place. These type of boys, wasn't it? Yeah, and what always strikes me about, like, particularly when when Dermot's talking about the the club and the town, like how much affection he has mm. for the town and for the for the club, like, and um, any of the the legends that we've had on like that aren't from Dundalk like they all like they all bought in they all understood how important it was um, and how important it is to the community and that was the thing with the like the 
I guess the most important bit, the most important element to me of what he was talking about was how the community is going to be what saves the football club. Yeah. That whatever situation we end up in, we won't let that, we won't let the club die. We'll, we'll go do our save, save our club stuff again. Like we'll do whatever we need to do um, to make sure the club survives. But I don't know if <laughs> um, there's, I just said, I saw a comment come in here. And I didn't want to bring it up while we were talking to him because I didn't want to upset him by telling him that Singley's already gone. Stephen Carney's out next to me. He's like, Singley will be next. And I'm like, oh, so no. harsh. I don't want I don't, I, I don't to upset the man. <laughs> yeah, and, and just, just, it's just on a, on a side note of Singley, it's only when I'd seen pictures last week and anybody on the chat might be able to put me right on this. When you used to come in the front door, so when you used to go into the stand, there's a little cubby shop on the left hand side, and there used to be two ladies in it, and they are gone as well. And they, I used to get my water and jellies before games religiously every week, and it broke me heart. Now I have no problem with businesses coming. Look, it's it's a way of the world, but to see them two ladies not in there, I don't know who the ladies are. Someone might be able to point me in the right direction. But you know, even things like that, that little bit of you know your usual, your norm on a Friday night or a, you know a Thursday night European match, whatever it is. Those little things have, have now gone, and look at it's. I know we have to move with times, but the, there's little elements that probably should have, you know, probably stayed with the well, you know. But um, yeah, look, it, it's great to listen to, to someone like them. But it's you know he, he's been on the list to get on for a while, and um, <laughs> man of the match, right? Man of the match for a couple of months. Um, yeah, and like I appreciate all the comments coming in. There's, there's a lot of comments here and on Twitter as well. Um, you know, I think, and I think the kind of consensus of it is that, you know, somebody, it's it's like when Martin Law comes on, we mentioned already, when someone like Dale McKeeley speaks, you, you kind of take note, you kind of sit up and listen. And it's a man that's been there now. You know, he, he hasn't coached in, you know, you're talking 20 years at, at, at Oriel Park, but he's a man with that kind of extra passion. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard when you listen to someone like that speak about other thoughts of Oriel Park at the minute. It's only when someone like that comes on it kind of brings home that God, it's 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 fallen so far, hasn't it? Like the whole yeah. the whole ship has has just sank completely. Yeah, and like he says, he's not talking. <laughs> he's not talking as somebody that's just sitting in the pub having a pint. Like he's talking yeah, yeah. as someone who knows what it's like to be in football clubs and to be in football clubs where there's absolute all sorts of shenanigans going on behind the scenes, and it's. Like that's the thing. Like it's all well, well and good us saying it. Like, yeah, uh, I am. I'm trying not to get too annoyed at the whole like keyboard warrior nonsense that gets thrown at people that put their opinions up on Twitter and Facebook and podcasts and stuff. But like when Dermot Keeley is saying the same things that we're saying, and is saying the things that all of us are saying, it gives an extra element of validity to what we what we feel and what we're seeing happening in front of us. Like, yeah. Sometimes we can get the wool pulled over our eyes in certain situations. Sometimes we can be probably more positive than we ought to be because we, we, we need to be. We need to be positive in certain situations. But when someone of his stature and someone of his like knowledge of the game lays it out the way he laid it out, that even saying things like... <laughs> if we got, like we're not, we're not even going to have 11 players at the start of next season. Like... It, because he's like, yeah, it's in the simplest terms. Yeah, and that's, like, that's exactly. Yeah, he's just broken it completely down and sim yeah. simple stuff for everybody. Yeah. And I saw another comment come in there. To Chris, Chris said like it's going to be a fire sale at the end of the season. It's not a fire sale. It's just a clear out. There's no money yeah. coming in for any of these boys. They're all just walking out the door. Yeah. There's not a penny and, come, uh, handing over or well. Yeah, and look, it's it's been another one of those weeks where like we've we we're, we've had good results. And we want to be positive and we want to, we do support the team and we do want the team to win every week. But at the same time, there's the reality of what's going on that has to be addressed while we're winning these games. If we were, if we were top of the league and we're winning the league by 10 points and we had no player signed up for next season, we would still have to bring this up. That this is an absolutely crazy situation to be in, yeah. even like irrespective of where we are in the league, what's happening off the field is absolutely mind-boggling. 
and that's not even to touch on the volunteers gone and workers in Oreo gone, like the, the ladies in the shop where you buy your jellies, like all that stuff. That's all really important to talk about as well. And uh, it's just, it was just nice hearing him lay it out and explain it the way he explained it to make all of us just be like, yeah, look, we are in an absolutely horrendous situation at the minute. Yeah. And I think, he, I think the line, I, I, like I said, I listened to this, this, that's the third time I kind of, I've listened back to it. I think the line, I think somebody might've mentioned in the comments, it's, you know, it's the greatest act of vandalism he's seen in League of Ireland. And that's what it is. Like, like you know, I never put, I never thought of it like that. And it, it is, it is like that. It's not, that's not being harsh. I don't think that, that is literally what it is. It's, it's someone coming in and just destroying what's been, what structure's been there in place for however long it's been. Now, I know, you know, he, he mentioned Save Our Club, you know, and it, that's only what, we're only nine years ago with Save Our Club. It's, it's only, yeah. it's not even that, you know, it's not even that. I was, I was only 16 at the time. Uh, but, uh, Eddie, uh, are you, are, are you aging the same way the clock yeah, behind you? That's it, yeah. I, yeah, I'm in Benjamin <laughs> Button. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the Matrix with the clock. <laughs> But it's, you know, you don't want to go back to that. But, like, look, as fans, everybody will go back to that if it needs to be. But you you were just getting to that stage now. We're just on that edge and we're teetering on that edge. And we're so far from falling in. It's just, it's madness how we've come to this. It's it's not like we don't have an owner. You, you think we were being run by, you know, just us sitting on, you know, talking in the stand, just random people. It, 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 these are businessmen. You know, they've gotten to where they are because they're clever with money. Believe it or not, they, they obviously have something. They've obviously got pedigree. And then yeah. to just do this to a football club is just, it's just, it's just mad. It, it, it's vandalism. That he couldn't, like, it was the one thing that stood out for you know, lots of things stood out. But that, that line, it's just, it's got to go on a banner somewhere if anybody wants to bother up for that one. It, it's, it's, it's mad. Yeah, there's, um, there's a comment. <laughs> yeah. He sticks vandals out. Yeah. Like, it's just, it is an interesting one to, like, to to think of like when the support in the ground is a hundred percent behind the team, which it has been for each of the home games uh, since we've all been allowed back in. It can create like this. It can be hard for someone to look at it and be like, "Oh, well, they're not really that upset about it," you know. Like it, hmm. it might take some sort of some banner or something to just make a statement so that people are like they're making their feelings known and um, not that i don't think it's going to do any good i don't think it's going to make any difference i think we could put everybody could wear a, a pig six vandals out t-shirt to the game against rovers and i don't mm. think it's going to make any difference at all and um, the like it's just we haven't even talked we haven't even touched on like obviously michael duffy has signed his pre-contract yeah. with Derry. Um, I I think there was a, a good seven players since then that we've heard like really credible rumors about them going as well. Yeah. I think everybody listening to this has probably heard a, a different set of credible rumors about where these players are going. Um the re- like when we were talking earlier on, like we're talking earlier on that like if we won tonight, like and Waterford lose tomorrow, we're putting good distance between them. So that another couple of wins before the end of the season that we'd be safe from the relegation spot. And then all of all of the inform all of all the information, all of the attention is gonna go on who's who's coming, who's staying. It's the the P6 could probably do with another a uh, few meaningful games in Oriel Park because if yeah. we have games where there's not really much writing on them, that's really when the banners are going to come out, and that's really when the songs will start, and that's really when people will really, really let their feelings be known because we're all we're all too invested, obviously, in the team to want to see them fail. So we all want to go on and cheer them and give them the lift that they need. But if there's a lull, if there's a couple of games at the end of the season when we have nothing to play for. Oh boy! Yeah, and that that's 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 where you're looking at. You, you don't want to say, "Oh, it could get out of hand." Like, it's probably it, it's almost if this was, we'd say, 
if this was a, a, a so-called bigger league, if this it probably would have got it in the hand at this stage. It's it's probably you know it's, it's probably a credit to the fans that it hasn't gotten out of hand. You know, and just we'll mention fans. I have seen a couple of texts for fair play to fans tonight. This or apparently we didn't we couldn't hear it on the stream, but I did hear it on the radio. The the singing and the fans were supposed to be unbelievable. They broke the drum. Oh, they broke the drum. <laughs> No better way. I game, saw on Twitter that they broke their drum. If you've broken your uh, drum, then you're having a cracking game. It's a fair <laughs> play for everybody to travel, and you know it's, it's, it's yeah. great to see the support. But um, you know what? Like even when you look to a game like next week, that somebody's mentioned, yeah, I mean, you know, you've Shamrock Rovers next week at all your back. Like that's that's the biggest game of the season generally on anybody's on most people's yeah. books. You know, regardless of its bowls, the local derby, but that that's a massive game next week, and you know. You, whether it's come at a good time, it's never a good time to play them, but it could come just at the right time. Just, you know, especially everybody's emotions is going to be at a high alert after watching that Dermot um, Keeley interview or even just listening to anybody on, during the week over the last couple of weeks on, on various podcasts. But that game next week now could be a real kind of, a real opportunity for fans just to, even just to get up to Oriel, just to get up watch a game and just not... Not voice their opinion, but you know, really support the players on the field as much as they can. Like we've seen tonight that Michael Michael I've called him Michael in a long time. Mickey Duffy has, you know, when, when he scored his goal, there was no you would never think he had signed for someone else. You know, he, he has that passion to wear that chair at the end of the season. And we need to kind of we need to make sure that we make him remember what he's done at Oriel Park. Um, yeah. you know, before before he goes off into the you know, northern sunset once again Just- up, the, up the Derry. Seeing uh, Paul's just putting in there, the game might be postponed next week because of international call-ups. I did see a comment. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, is it is who's in the squad? Is it Scales? I'm not actually sure. There's nobody from old. Scales doesn't play for them anymore, no. Oh, Scales? No, not Scales. Um, oh yeah, like who would be the list? Who'd be on the call-ups? Somebody, somebody should. One of us should probably be research into this and figure out what's going on. But uh... um, I, I think I think if you have two or more, isn't that right? Is it two or yeah. more call-ups the game can go off? I know Bowles had a problem with it last season or the season before. Um, um, I'm not sure who I'm not sure who would who would be affected. Maybe it's the under 21s. Um it's supposed um, to be on the TV as well, like it's supposed to be on RTE. So that again, mm. another brilliant opportunity for uh a massive well, Lopez, Lopez uh, called up, okay. Yeah, but then I don't know whether if if Lopez is called up, that falls into the same category yeah, as us having yeah, the yeah. called up. Or um, hopefully, hopefully it's not. I think it's well, probably we're probably in that kind of frame where we it could be a good game for us at the same time because we're on that little bit of a run of not getting murdered. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's a good run. We're yeah, that's a good. It's, it's probably look. There's never like I said, there's never a good time to play them. But if you're going to play them, probably next week is the best time to play them. So hopefully that game is is a good. I, I think for the fans as well. Um, you know, having played Finn Harp forty seven times in the last two weeks, I think it'd be nice to get the, the you know the <laughs> incoming league champions. As you, if you, that's as much as you hear to say it. That's and you know that's what they are, and that's what they probably will be. Probably next season if they don't, if they'll only kick on probably. But you know if you can turn them over in Oriel Park, that's again, what's... again, yeah, good again. Good yeah, and should, and, yeah, and we should just mention, uh, just you know, I know we were done to our podcast, but congratulations to Shelburne who, uh, and we're just because we Dale McKeeley on as well, yeah. up, up as champions tonight in the first division. I don't think it was ever in doubt with the players that they got in the, the practically of a preppy division squad. Um, but well done to them. Just when we had them on the show, I just meant to, meant to say it out. But um, we look, I just think the next season, right? That's the hope. We hope we're not swapping. We're not swapping uh, positions with them in the leagues. But um, it's it's one of those. We're at one of those stages now where you know we have a run of league games. We have the cup in three weeks. You just kind of hope that they're not going to. You hope that we can kind of maintain a little bit of momentum. Like, you know, you'd probably snap your hand off now for a draw next week and you hope the fans will enjoy it. You, hope you just want for, a, want for a good game at this stage. So hopefully, you know, come this time next week, we'll be sitting here talking a minimum, a good draw, a score draw, hopefully. Yeah. I think the one thing I think we can actually guarantee is that the atmosphere is going to be amazing. Yeah. Because it was even thinking the last time that we, when we beat them previously, and it was like that back to the wall last 10 minutes. Like the place would have been going absolutely bananas. And it'll be going bananas before kickoff. And 
through the form, like the boys have been absolutely sensational making noise in the sheds since they've been allowed back in. So we obviously expect the same again on them um, on Friday night. Like the place will be absolutely hopping and it'll give the boys a massive lift. Yeah, um I think so. And I I don't um what's the uh I'm trying to think of that fella that that signed for uh Shamrock Rovers to play he plays right back, I think. He plays some of the games, doesn't play all of the games. Um, yeah, but, um, but in in one of the halves he's gonna be running past the, the shed. So um it'd be interesting. Yeah, he had an empty with a, with shed full, the last time. Yeah, with a with a full shed, it'd be um it'll be interesting. Yeah. For that reason alone, they probably should have had a daytime kickoff. <laughs> just, for that, just for that reason alone. But it'll be interesting to see if like they might even debate not playing him because he has to run up and down beside the shed. Um but hopefully he is playing. That, but look at that's what makes games. That's what's that's what's great about League of Ireland because you'll always you'll always hope against players because it's such a merry go round. It hasn't been as a merry go round as it used to be. You'll always hope against ex players every, pretty much every game you play. But this one, this one in particular will you know it'll, it'll hurt a few people and that look at that's that's what we go to Oriel Park for. That's what League of Ireland's all about. I won't be able and, to do the podcast next week because I can't say any of their names. So no. <laughs> <there's no laughs> <laughs> and like, I, like, just like, just with Frank Carlin there, a comment at the end, like, you know, if they could beat Oriel, yeah, like, I mean, imagine just the buzz around town, the buzz in, in Oriel, out of Oriel, the Carrick Road, downtown. It'd be like a, you know, it's like, it'd be like a cup final. I think just to take the league champions here, and then the, especially, it'd be different if we were in second, but, you know, the season we'll have to get something of like that game next week would be fantastic, yeah. Will we do a wee score prediction or are we, are we, are we, are we, are we not going that way? 5 0. Well, I, I'll say 3 then because I'd be closer. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> score, I, I score draw for me, anyway. I think a score draw. Yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I think they'll. Fuck it. I think they'll win. Come on, you boy. Yeah. 2 0. No, Jesus, not nil. This won't be the game that to keep a clean sheet. 2 1. <laughs> 2 1. You're, I think Frank Carroll is just confident that he's going for 2 1 as well. Me and Frank are on the same scores every single week. Um. And I don't think we've gotten any of them right. So frankly, <laughs> you might get one right at some point. <laughs> uh, I, I'll, hit, I'll hit for one on next week. I'm going to go for one on. I've done a lot of one-alls. I'm going to go two on. I've done a lot of one alls this season. I'll go two on. Two more Stick, me, stick me naked. Yeah. Uh, I think we leave it there, don't we? I think, I think so. Between, between ourselves and that and all, we, it's probably a massive come down for people after listening to Dale McKeeley for 25 minutes. We probably shouldn't have come back on. They probably didn't need to see us again. Yeah, but, this uh, is the two lads in the pub that he was saying. Like, <laughs> I'm not one of them. I'll leave it to you lads to be the two agents in the pub. But uh, look, just just uh, special, definitely special thanks to them for for taking the time to talk to Donald and Chris, and um, thanks to all the, anybody commenting. In. We've a lot of comments, today, a lot of interest in it. It's great to see that. It's do you know what's great to see? It's great to see younger people who still who know who Dale McKeeley is. I, not that I, I'm not saying he's ancient, but you know that. People in dark, people who are I can see here, teenagers commenting. I see it on Twitter as well. You know, everybody knows people like that. And that's that's what this club's all about. They don't forget. And yeah, look, I really appreciate all the comments coming in. We're, we're kind of running very tight on them at the minute. But um, if we didn't, if we didn't get any of your comments up, I apologize. He'll get a warm welcome. I highly, yeah, he definitely he'll get some kind of welcome. It'll be warm. He'll feel it on the back of his neck. <laughs> It'll definitely be warm. <laughs> <laughs> so listen uh, thanks for everybody um, damn it thanks for Chris and Pingle coming on earlier on Chris a little bit uh, Chris is working out of the horses now folks because uh, he's no longer at Oriel Park so that's something we can probably take on the list there absolute sham but uh, thanks very much Don't cheers to yourself will, will I end it or will you end it you, what are we going with I, I think with the, the thing of the night we'd have to go with uh, Peak 6 Vandals out <laughs>